This podcast features adults using adult language. You have been warned. Hello and welcome to Hit or Glitch, a podcast where we explore the multiverse of geek culture and experiment with rules and systems. This season, we are exploring a galaxy far, far away. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us again. That was a, uh interesting end to our last adventure. It really sucked. I had another character die. Yeah. I mean, what's this make? Out, out of all the games I've played, I've had a character die in every game. I remember when you died on a crapper once. <laughs> no, no, no. Mind you that died in, sucks. Not in. On. In. That's right. Died in. <laughs> you died in an outhouse once. It wasn't even an outhouse. It was, the, it was, it was an estate shithole. <laughs> it was an outhouse. Yeah, the stakes cool. at the bottom of it. Whatever. It was awesome. That character was awesome, yes. I wasn't talking about the character. <laughs> anyway. Well, we're not here to talk about that. No. Story for another time. We, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about how, uh, how I prepared for this game because uh, I had to do it differently than what I would normally do for a long-term campaign. Where in a long-term campaign, I usually, I'll set up a setting and I'll make some key NPCs and then I like to just let my players play in the sandbox. With this game, I had to structure it. Rigidly is not the right word, but I basically outlined the adventure and I outlined it in three acts. Act one, two, and three. Set up scenes for each one. And I will tell you, practically immediately, I had to abandon half of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, because we didn't talk to any of the NPCs. Uh, yeah, I was I was thinking and hoping that you guys would uh, investigate your competition a little more. So I had set up a space for you guys to do that in, but Alex never wanted to leave the ship. No. And you wanted to get back to it pretty quick. The only so. two people who would have been willing to was one guy, uh, was the, the Jedi, but he was more concerned about the explosives guy, and the explosives guy was... Had his fun. Had his fun. Played game. Yeah. I did talk to one of the group. Yep. Yep, we had uh, quite a bit. So, I had been thinking about possibly scanning all these NPC character sheets uh, as part of a module if Hmm. people wanted to run this on their own. Because I have basically all of their motivations written on the back of them Hmm. and histories for all of them, well, for most of them, except for the ones that I knew were going to die in a crash. Oh. Mm. So did you, yeah, about that crash, how did you do that beforehand? Uh, I knew uh, that they were going to be your primary competition to get to the site. Because they the best way to drive. Yeah, so it was a matter of, I knew how many times it took them to make the calculation and to get get the jump. So it was a matter of, can you do it faster? And... You guys did. I think you had one more test than they did. Mm. So it was you guys got there practically right after they did. Yeah. Which is why it was still on fire when you yeah. got there. But yeah, it was a question of do you get there and get shot at, or do they? Thus, getting your ship blown out of the sky, <laughs> or do you get there after them and have to potentially rescue them, mm. or that places that moral conundrum on you. Do you bother rescuing them or not? Yeah. Which I didn't know if you would, and you guys almost didn't. Yeah, we yeah. came very close, but then we made finally we paid. Somebody made the choice. It wasn't me. It was it was uh, Scott. Yeah, Scott. myself and Biba. Yeah, I kind of uh, agreed to go with it because I figured there might be salvage. So one of the things that I did uh, bake into this cake was the potential betrayal of you guys by your crew members. Mm. by the NPC crew members. And uh, this actually came about because years ago, I ran a Star Wars campaign, uh, D20. Uh, it was before Saga. I think it's the D20 second edition. That uh, was what we were using. And it was set in the Rebellion era. And I like... It was a huge group of NPCs and PCs. I think the total count on the crew was... 12, hmm. I think, 12 or 15. Uh-oh. So there was a lot of play mm-hmm. to work loyalties and stuff. And in that 
with that game, I was like, it's going to be one of these two people that are going to betray the crew. And it, what's going to determine it is how they're interacting with mm. Who the PCs bond with will determine which one of them remains loyal. Mm. And uh, that turned out to be a lot of fun because they hated the guy that betrayed them <laughs> um, with a passion they hated that guy. And the one that they had remained loyal to, one of the players in particular who hated the guy that betrayed them caused her death. Oh. Uh, well, not caused, but she was unable to save her. Oh, dear. Yeah, that, that game was, was quite a lot of fun. So I wanted to mimic that structure a little bit uh, with the NPCs in this game on your crew. So, of course, it's either going to be Beva or Zidane. Right. So Depending on which way, we, if we go light side, dark side. Yeah, basically. basically. And also how you treated them. So because you guys never really got close with Zidane at all. So, so wait, pulling him off of the guys trying to kidnap him in the big battle wasn't <laughs> scoring points? <laughs> well, it was, but the ground had already been sown <laughs> by that point. And that's why he didn't try to gas you guys. Yeah. Mm. It's he could have just, you know, locked all the doors and turned the air off. Yeah, that wouldn't have gone very well for him when the two people who came to the door this game could still have come to the door. It's like, ah, I turned all the air off. And then the two guys in breath masks come up there, rip the door open, and watch him float back. Yeah, true. But, uh, and he actually, his character had sort of a change of heart in a different way. Because I had it that you guys' ship got captured, mm-hmm. and he was the one there, because mm-hmm. you wanted somebody to stay with the ship. Mm-hmm. Some of his motivations changed. Whereas he had been the one to con- who had the contact with the First Order, let's get this job done. And I said it in dialogue with you guys. You know, he witnessed what the Force had done to these people. Right. Yeah. And so he was very motivated to turn over those artifacts. Yeah. To people who wanted to destroy them. So not exactly light side, dark side at the end, but light side, gray side? <laughs> yeah. I do enjoy shades of gray. Oh, so don't start them. a book. No. <laughs> no, no, no. no <laughs> not, not anywhere near that one. Uh, no. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I made... I think I have... Oh, crap, is that entire like, stack NPCs? Yes. Like 20 or 30 NPCs. Oh, yeah. Dude, there were a lot of NPCs. Yeah, I never really got to interact with any of those really big uh, other species, the Yism or the other Wiki or the... Uh, 26. Wow. And yeah, and I had a whole subplot for me for you. Oh. If you had. Because <laughs> the Wookiee and the Yazim are both female. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, that would have been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> uh like, ooh, you know, strong, strapping young Wookiee, and then I take my helmet off. Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he's certainly not scruffy looking. <laughs> no, yeah, he's I mean, burnt I, looking. I, uh, because I also want to, I was hoping that you guys would have those interactions with the, the crew members of those ships so that when the confrontation came down, there would yeah. be a little more there. Yeah. But, alas. The prob- well, the thing for me is, uh, I don't know, I, I have a suspicious nature in a game of this sort, and I was like, we are not leaving our ship alone. Somebody will, will do something to our ship if we leave it alone. So, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's just too many, too many uh, CD elements around. And you weren't describing, like, a whole bunch of security in the area or anything, so, yeah, there's no way I was leaving the ship alone. If no one else was staying, I was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So what did you guys think? It was, was it fun. a fun ride? Yeah. It was yeah. great. It was a very interesting ride. I will tell. I, I will tell you that much. You did mm-hmm. keep me guessing. On what? I love how well, like, I love the fact that Beaver was not the one who was going to betray us yet. He not still necessarily. constantly questioned her motivation. I so love that <laughs> so much. That was so much fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like, what kept me guessing was, like, when we were in the woods and we get ambushed by those guys, and it was like, 
well, obviously they they're part of this other group, and it's like, well, apparently this other group oh, also yeah. isn't with them. And so I was I was really kind of questioning what was going on here in this planet, yeah, and what was protecting the planet because we didn't. I mean, we knew something about missile contrails at one point when we rescued the crew members of the Alderanian Alderanian Shoals, but even then, it was like, yeah, but why are who's protecting this place, and why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really wasn't trusting our uh, our friend there. Our burned, burned friend. Oh yeah, oh, Gail. Gail, yeah. What was the deal with her without moving the dug seat, being able to fly and everything? <laughs> Can you tell us that now after the fact? <laughs> <laughs> well, she just has so many dead nerves in her lower extremities. She just cramp herself into it and not care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when we found this small EBA suit, I was wondering if she was some kind of shape-shifting race. <laughs> <laughs> the question I have, uh, the, the two Force users that we encountered, were they dark side? No. No? No. no just... They were specifically uh, not. Okay. Yeah, I, I had, when, I was, when I was making them, I had thought about it. Oh, yeah, the, the two Force users back yeah, at Yeah, Admiral and Riva. Yeah. And for a while, I'd, I'd gone back and forth. Like, I thought maybe one of them would be, and one of them wouldn't be. And if you guys somehow managed to get in and, and talk with them, and maybe you can drive a wedge between them. But again, like I said, I like to play in the gray area, so yeah. uh, I, I, I decided, you know what? They're not really in, on the dark side, because they were trained by Jedi. Right. So they're aware of the dark side's influence, though they've never had to confront it. Right, so I, yeah. I got the impression that Admiral was definitely slipping in that direction. Yeah, yeah, and that's how I wanted to play him. Okay. Is that he's he basically has become a warlord, and much like when the Jedi were fighting the Sith, a lot of Jedi fell. Yeah, um, and also in the Clone Wars, you had that a little bit happen. Just the fact of combat all the time. If you're a warlord, eh, yeah, it's a fine line you have to walk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, had written, and I had written like two, the way it's organized, it comes out to like four pages, I think. But if I were to condense it, it's like two pages of background um, on the history of what had happened, mm. uh, starting with the crash of the Jedi ship. So yeah, I mean, I've done one other campaign like this, which Alex, you played in. Uh, it was the Legend of the Five, the Legend of the Five Rings game. I learned all five R. Oh no, you played in it too. Yeah. Uh, oh Kerrigan. yes. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, the my Hamlet yes. adaptation. Yep. That was uh, fun. Yeah, inspired by uh, Rin. I was like, you know what? And uh, the other Akira Kurosawa film that's based on Macbeth. I was like, I'm gonna do an L5R adaptation of Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. I did that, and basically, they, the PCs were playing uh, analogs to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, Horatio, and uh, Olivia, didn't Ophelia. You, didn't you give yeah. us our roles for that one? Yes, yeah. I made all the characters and gave you guys those characters yeah. with with index cards saying you know this about the situation. Yeah. And the challenge was, can you save quote unquote Hamlet? Yeah. And the answer was no, they're not. No, they didn't. No. Because oh, the that's one right. the, the person playing the Shigenja who could have just pulled it a couple threads didn't bother. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, you gave him all the options and he was just like, Nope. I decided that this guy is going to just thinks everybody should pay for what they've done and die. Yep. Oh yeah, BJ? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I, I sat there and literally to the end was going to defend Hamlet. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was not going to give up. And it wasn't until somebody, a female archer, made a shot that pierced through my hand and made me drop my katana that I finally was done. And the only thing that I think saved me was the scorpion courtier. She did not want me to die, so she was just like... Get away! Like he's done. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Anyways, back to this game. Yeah. Some questions. 
Why did we originally choose World of Darkness to do a Star Wars game? Well, for me, we, we've, we've played this system before. Uh, we found it, I think, more than a year ago. Yeah. Someone had published something on it. And I was like, why didn't I ever think of that? <laughs> and the, the guy's work was, was, pretty, was okay, and it was quite extensive, and the way that he, had, he put it together was well done. But he, I don't think he quite understood the mechanics. Right. So we changed everything to be more balanced with the mechanics of the game. And ultimately, for me, I am biased against level-based systems. For me. Mm. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Um, I like, don't get me wrong, I like D&D. And I like the, the systems like it sometimes. But for Star Wars, I feel that it should be a little bit more open. Um, yeah. Like, I don't think any of the characters in Star Wars really fit into a... The seven classes that were yeah, in the E20. The, yeah. And I, I don't feel like... I don't know. It, it feels very constraining a lot of times and doesn't allow you to really make what you want to make. Yeah. Yeah, and I, yeah, the open-ended nature of it, you get to choose your skills and you improve incrementally as you go rather than you know you rack up the xp and suddenly you're a level higher and now basically everything about you is better yeah i i also i i like world of darkness for its its elegance of design yeah it's a simple system to learn and it where shadow run in a much more direct way i think tries to give you more of a handle on the physics of things. It tries to mimic physics more correctly right. uh, than World of Darkness does. World of Darkness is more about the storytelling than worrying about that. It has some rules and they've put out supplements that get more into detail about combat. But yeah, that's why I, we did the World of Darkness. Plus, like if you're going to hack a system, it has to be hackable um, and it has to fit with what you're trying to do. And uh, World of Darkness has elegance in the design of its system that you can port it into a lot of different things, so long as you don't try to break that system. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... So uh, we've added, like, for this port, we've added a lot of different uh, mechanics to the game that aren't in the base World of Darkness game. Are we going to put that somewhere where our listeners can find it? Yes, that will be up on the website. Um, and if you've been and on YouTube, uh, we've been if you've been watching the screens, uh, little screen captures of those notes have been being played. Uh, yeah, um, I'm responsible for doing that, and I just um, uh, the only way I was able to get it up there was by using Photoshop, and I can't figure out how to get Photoshop to work. It is the most difficult and extensive thing to use out there and it just it doesn't turn out as well as as I would hope but it's getting better so it's there yeah I would like to get all of this up there on when we get a full website going uh, have a, a full post of how we do it or for the people who are listening in the future go to the website and what yeah yeah <laughs> Hello, as some future friends, people. Yeah, as some friends of ours on uh, a podcast called uh, Major Spoilers and Critical Hit say, hello, future people. Oh, another question. Why did you decide, or why did we decide to be more anti-heroes in this game where we're sort of scum and villainy ourselves? That's a good question. Because scum and villainy is sometimes more entertaining there's a lot of different podcasts. There's a lot of different groups that play. They've got to save the princess. They've got to find her in the next castle. Or they've got to beat the dragon. They have to save the world. Sometimes it's just a little more interesting and a little more fun to play somebody who's just looking for a paycheck. It doesn't always mean that they don't help the world, but it also means that they don't sometimes hinder the world either. It was really a way to give us a freedom of choice and opportunity 
to be or do whatever he wanted without the construct of basically saying, you have to be the good guy. That, and I think uh, when I first pitched you guys the, the Star Wars game, I had left that open. And I, and I said, you know, and this was before episode seven was released when I started developing this game. Because it was like, well, let's hold off deciding which side we're going to be on until the movie comes out. And I can see it so that I can, so that I will understand the interplay between the two sides a little better. Uh, you judge whether or not I got that right or not. And it was like, well, in some ways, we're going to see the resistance story in episode seven. So maybe it would be funner to show more of the First Order yeah. side of things. I also think, realistically, at least half of the people that were players are self-admitted assholes, so it's just more natural to play an asshole if you just want honesty. <laughs> that would be Kerrigan and myself. <laughs> I just like to blow things up. I don't... I don't know anything about, well, yeah, no, I'm a total asshole. Your, I, I your concept you. was Gary Busey with explosives, man. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of character concepts, that's another question. How did we come up with our characters? Really, I wanted to play something that I had never played before. And when we were going through the equipment list and everything that was going on, I really wanted to play somebody that was just a little more wild, somebody whose motivations weren't always clear, and somebody who really well, didn't care about being judged. So I decided to play Gary Busey with explosives. If I wanted to blow something up, I had the complete opportunity to blow something up, and I didn't care what people thought about me blowing things up. And at the same time, I always had that ability to sit there and say, I'm having a moral quandary about this all of a sudden. For me, as... Uh Actually, my concept was Kwai Chen Kane from Kung Fu in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> um, I had been, I had rewatched a couple episodes of Kung Fu. I love that show, and I was like, that would be an interesting character to see in the Star Wars. And that was before we had come up with our party, before I knew anyone else's concept. And the way it worked out, I was kind of trying to be the moral compass and let's go save the people. Let's help these citizens out that are, you know, being destitute. A couple of times I lost it, but my character's weakness was wrath, so when it came down to it, he would get violent at times. Um, for me, I had ju I have just played several World of Darkness games and was really enjoying the fighting styles. It's been some of the most, like, I'm a mechanics guy and I, I enjoyed that. And so I was deciding I was going to make a combat guy to begin with, regardless of what the choice was. Um, Admiral Minmax. <laughs> well, when we started talking about um, playing more evil side characters, uh, I thought about playing a bounty hunter. And uh, so I went with a character from the EU as my base of... Uh, oh, crap. What is it now? Mm -hmm. Anyway, there's a Wookiee bounty hunter. Not so far, it's... Uh, no, it's not from Old Republic. No, uh, it's... Anyway, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Man, just lost all my cred. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll put it in the liner notes if you think of it later. Yeah. Anyway, and like his story is, you know, that he's he's been exiled from Kashyyyk, and I was thinking about playing with that idea a bit, kind of going my own way. But yeah, and from there, you know, I did. I had to pick up a lot of things that make bounty hunters. Uh, so I had to have the the investigation and. Uh, intimidation and you know ability to take things dead or alive whichever the job depended on and so that kind of made a lot of my character yeah as, as for me I've actually made, uh, played uh, almost the exact same character in a previous game I would really liked it and wanted to go further with it and do something slightly different so I pretty much remade the same character but uh, uh, made some minor different choices instead of being a, a, a really good sniper and some, uh, an okay pilot I went with a really awesome pilot and an okay sniper yeah and you guys took advantage more of the profession yes. yeah that we developed yeah you want to talk about that a little bit or did you already 
No, so we didn't. Well, we, we we touched on some of the stuff that we that we had changed, but I think we can. Talk, that's a good segue into the profession's background merit, and that my handwritten notes have been of that have flashed through the videos uh, a few times. Okay. So, without realizing it, you guys have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> All those zoomed in to like this one section where you get like maybe a sentence. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, when we first ported over the Star Wars into World of Darkness, I, I wanted a merit that would sort of give background to the, play, to the characters, so that, to be honest, so that they would have points for the fighting styles because it is Star Wars. Yeah. Um, and also for if somebody wanted to play a Jedi and had to spend background points on that too. Yeah, yeah. So, but the profession's merit gives you bonus dots and other merits, basically, to build your character. I like the options of that it can tell a story, the choices that you make. The politician gets crazy because you can do so many things. Do you stay local? Do you go planetary, galactic? Oh. You, you, you like the law enforcement one. Yeah, I like the law enforcement because it can you can see in it the the build whether you're going as a dirty cop or a clean cop. Like there's a level where you can get resources, and it's kind of indicating. Well, are you getting that from uh, you know the, the the government is actually paying you that well, or are you probably more likely accepting bribes and stuff like that? Yeah, and the military back the military track. You're either going frontline commander with it. Or more the Pentagon esque route, right? Where you're a, you're flying a desk instead of a tank, because <laughs> yeah. tanks fly in Star Wars. Yep. Of course they do. I mean, some of them walk instead, but <laughs> some of them more. Uh, but Scott and Kerrigan, you guys didn't really take advantage of the profession backgrounds. Nope. Nope. I mean, I did take part of the EOD background, but. That was mostly, it was in the book already, and a lot of the stuff that you had for the EOD background as far as the profession didn't fit 100% with what I wanted to do with my character. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and Kwai Chen Kang doesn't really have a profession. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he just walks the earth. Yes, we didn't have a walk the earth profession. <laughs> um, but I, to be honest, uh, I don't know... If in your base game of World of Darkness, if the profession's merit will work, right? Um, Probably not. One of the things that I found it useful for, however, from a base game standpoint, is the prerequisites that we set up. Is a great way to determine dice pools for NPCs, right? So you know that this guy is a cop. Well, that means he's going to have. Six in this dice pool, four in this dice pool, three in this dice pool, to at a at a minimum. Right. So that's where, like in a base game, I found it useful uh, as a useful tool to have on how to think about NPCs on the fly. And from a mechanic standpoint, I like it because the way World of Darkness is set up with your free merit points at the beginning or free merit dots at the beginning. From a like XP standpoint, if you're taking like one or two dots and five or six different things, then you're actually kind of in XP debt compared to somebody who goes like five dots in one thing, four dots in one thing, where they're, you know, maxing out whatever it is they're putting their dots into. Like they're basically gaining an XP advantage over the other people. And that kind of always has bothered me about the, uh, that, that part of the system. And so the way this, this works is you did, you get, these floating points in a bunch of different things. And so you can actually have your character kind of spread out into a bunch of different things at the beginning, but you're not wasting XP for having done that. 